something happening in the Baltic, right? Well, let's play out two indisputable facts. Number one, experts agree that only a government could have blown the Nord Stream pipelines. It couldn't have set up the explosions. Number two, the destruction represents a major setback to Russia, which has been asking Europe to open the pipeline. Of course, what was remarkable is that in the day following this catastrophic and potentially uh, escalating move was the near total silence from the United States. Uh, EU and NATO official silence. That was until late today. A military official, who refused to go on the record, of course, said not only there was, that there was no American involvement, but that there's increasing evidence that this was a sophisticated attack, adding that European allies say that the suspicion and likely culprit is Russia. Joining me now, independent journalist Glenn Greenwald, whose work you will soon find on Rumble. Glenn, that was a, that was a lot there, but your thoughts on this idea, it's been germinating for a few days now, that Russia might have sabotaged its own uh, inflow of money from, from the pipeline, blow it up to play, I guess, four-dimensional chess. How many things have been blamed on Russia over the past five or six years by the Western media, by the EU, by neoliberals and deep state operatives that turned out to be completely false? They even invented a conspiracy theory. You probably remember that Russia had some super secret hypersonic weapon that was causing brain damage in American diplomats that nobody had ever heard of before, and it turned out to be debunked even by the CIA. Why would Russia explode their own pipeline that gives them enormous amounts of leverage. They can turn off that pipeline at any time that they want, which gives them exactly the power that they most want. I don't know who did this, but what I do know is what you said, that a state uh, could only do this. But also, the U.S. has been obsessed for years, going back to the Bush administration, with trying to bully and coerce and persuade the Europeans not to buy natural gas from Moscow, but to instead buy it from the United States. Donald Trump, while he was being called a Putin asset or blackmailed by the Kremlin, was one of the leaders in badgering the Germans, saying, we pay you for your defense. You should be buying natural gas from us. And now suddenly the pipeline blows up in the middle of this war, and we're going to blame Russia for that, the, the, the country that has the least interest in doing it. Yeah, the leverage that they have with that pipeline is huge, as you said. And I know, Glenn, you're not going to be surprised to hear uh, this analysis from the former CIA director, Brennan, today. These pipelines are only in about 200 feet or so of water, and Russia does have an undersea capability to that would easily lay explosive devices uh, by those pipelines. I think this is uh, clearly a, a, an act of sabotage of some sort, and, and Russia is certainly the most likely uh, suspect. Hey, Glenn, what has John Brennan actually gotten right in his career? Let's, let's just start with that. What has he gotten right about China, about the uh, espionage threats from China, all the things that happened uh, in Iraq, Afghanistan, that they did not know, did not uh, you know, uh, predict? I mean, all of this. Yeah, I mean, John Brennan was the leader of the CIA during the Obama years. And prior to that, he was a high-ranking official in the CIA during the Bush years. And that was nothing but one disaster after the next. John Brennan is a trained liar. He's a trained disinformation agent, even though he now works in various media outlets like CNN and, and, and for NBC, where, you know, the CIA used to work hard to figure out how to clandestinely infiltrate media outlets. Now they just do it out in the open. But. You know, John Brennan and the CIA is what invented the hoax of Russiagate. They're the ones that spun all of these tales about how Russia was responsible for infiltrating the United States. And so now we're going to hear from John Brennan just an assertion. He's the one who said that the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation. Look at how they blame Russia for everything. And it turns out to be lies. And now they're just going to assert this, knowing there's no evidence, hoping that Americans will continue to be gullible. Well, Glenn, this doesn't surprise us one bit because we've actually been tracking what he has said and the multiplicity of lies and misinformation coming out of his mouth. It also doesn't surprise us, does it, that YouTube decided to pull that Maloney speech from 2019, whatever you think about the speech. Some people like it, some people don't. But she's a new, new prime minister of Italy. They pull her speech. It's gotten millions and millions of, of, of likes and so forth. And then they restore it later today, saying, oh, it was an error. Do they have any credibility on that? 
I think big tech is really digging their own grave, much like the corporate media did. No one trusts the corporate media. You look at polls because they're partisan operatives for the Democratic Party and people know they're willing to lie. Big tech is increasingly proving to, and announcing that the only things we permit on our platforms are things that completely align with the establishment pronouncement. We saw that during COVID, the war in Ukraine. We're seeing it now when there, there's the, the Italian people elect somebody that Brussels bureaucrats disapprove of. And as a result, there's emerging an entire new ecosystem on the internet that's devoted only to free speech and to resisting censorship demands like Google, which owns YouTube, is increasingly imposing and everybody knows it. And I think that they're really, in a way, fueling their own backlash because this kind of repression, this intolerance for any dissent at all, is something that's just unsustainable. Well, and I think it shows the weakness of their position because when you're confident about your views or your policies, you welcome a debate. But the Democrats, sadly, and I'm sure some Republicans as well, but Democrats right now seem to be running from an actual policy debate, whether it's on Ukraine or sending another $12 billion to Ukraine, I guess, we found out this week. Uh, is there any real debate about how things are going in Ukraine, or are we just going to agree with whatever CNN says? I mean, it's the war fever that we've seen over and over. It's amazing. Once it starts, everyone's petrified of questioning it. There's about six dozen or seven dozen members of the House Republican Caucus and Republican uh, Senate Caucus who have been willing to step up and say, we don't think billions of billions of dollars should be sent to a war in Ukraine where we have no vital interest at stake while Americans are suffering at home. The entire Democratic Party war from AOC and Bernie to the most right wing of the Democratic Party is completely unified. It's completely unanimous in support of Biden's war policies. And again, I could accept that if there were a real debate, but if you question the claims of the CIA and the U.S. government and the EU about what's happening in Ukraine, you get censored. And as you said, that is a sign that people are hiding lies and propaganda if they don't want any dissent permitted. Yeah, any question turns you into a pro-Putin, you know, apparatchik. I mean, that's exactly. the extent of the debate. Glenn, thanks. Great to see you tonight.